Hi guys, it's Rachel. The past few days, it's been raining pretty hard here in Vancouver, so the weather hasn't really been like film friendly. But today, I finally get to go out and share this info pack video, which is all about how to compute your CRS score for Express Entry. Don't worry, I'll give a refresher on how Express Entry works. I'll also provide detailed steps on how to compute your score. And I'll even throw in my experience by sharing my CRS score breakdown and provide receipts. But very quickly, just a shameless plug. First off, as a reminder, I do assist prospective students in finding schools and applying to programs here in Canada that are aligned with their educational needs and immigration goals. And secondly, I also work closely with immigration lawyers and registered immigration consultants that may assist you with various immigration-related applications should you need their help. So if you're interested to know more about the services I offer, then be sure to check out my website at canxvisa.com with details in the description box below. Okay, now that that's done, let's jump right into the video. Okay, before I begin spewing out valuable info, I just want to cover some of the acronyms that I'll be using in this video for your reference. So here are the ABCs of Canadian Immigration. I'll give you guys some time to read over it. Um, you can even pause this video if you like, but hopefully the majority of you already know what it stands for. Next, I just want to do a quick recap on Express Entry. Express Entry is a type of economic immigration that selects skilled foreigners to apply for PR. But how does Canada invite people to apply for PR anyway? Well, to start, you need to qualify for the Express Entry program, which I covered in more detail found in this video. Once you're eligible, you may then create what is called an Express Entry profile. Basically, IRCC will use your profile to rank you among other candidates using a merit-based system to assign you points, which we call the CRS score. Your score is based on several factors, such as your age, your language proficiency, level of education inside and outside of Canada, and if you have foreign or Canadian skilled work experience, you will also get points for that. And now, this is where the fun begins. Because in approximately two weeks, IRCC releases a draw. So what happens during a draw? Well, IRCC releases a cutoff score, which contains the following info. So that's number one, the date and time of the invitation round. Second, the number of candidates that will get an invite. Third, the type of immigration program or programs included for that draw. And last but not least, the CRS cutoff score. Now, to better understand this concept, let's apply it by comparing my CRS score to a cutoff score. And just to fill you in, I was also like you that went through the immigration process under the Express Entry program. I submitted an Express Entry profile sometime in October 2019. I got a total CRS score of 450 points, and moreover, I qualified under two programs, which were CEC and FSW. And the first draw that I ever participated in occurred on October 30th, 2019, which you'll see on your screen. So basically, it was an all-program draw, meaning CEC, FSW, FST, and PNP candidates are part of this draw. There were 3,900 invitations issued, so 3,900 lives changed that day. And lastly, the most crucial part, the cutoff score for that draw was 475 points. So let's compare that to my score. Again, I got 450 points, and right off the bat, I already knew that I will not get an ITA. Why? Because my CRS score was lower than the cutoff score. If I scored above 475, let's say 476, then I would have gotten an ITA and the golden email inviting me to submit a PR application. Now, what happens if I scored exactly 475 points? Well, because there's probably thousands of others like you that have the same score as the cutoff score, but only 3,900 invitations issued for that draw, IRCC established what is called a tie-breaking rule. Basically, if more than one candidate has the lowest score, only those that submitted an express entry profile on or before the cutoff date and time will get an ITA. It means that I should have submitted my express entry profile on or before August 29th, 2019 at that timestamp to get an ITA. And this is a very small but important detail that most people like take for granted. Right when you meet the eligibility requirements for express entry, submit an express entry profile right away and get into the pool. Because in special circumstances like this, 
it's good to be prompt. And take note guys, your Express Entry profile only stays valid in the pool for one year. So you want to qualify for more draws, for more chances of winning. <laughs> and um, hopefully get an ITA before your Express Entry profile expires. Now, a lot of you have been asking me about my breakdown. I see your score breakdown. And I see you. And I will deliver with receipts. So let's begin. First off, age. I got 110 points for this category, which is the maximum score you'll get for age. At the time, I was between 20 to 29 years old, and hence I got the maximum score for age as a single applicant. Next is level of education. So I got 128 points because I had two or more certificates, with one having a program length of three years or more. And you may be wondering, like, wait a minute, you only studied a one-year program here in Canada. How did you get two or more certificates? Well, I actually applied for an ACA or an Education Credentials Assessment. I happened to finish a bachelor's degree in engineering from the Philippines, and I got my credentials assessed by ICES. It turns out that my five-year bachelor's degree from the Philippines is equivalent to a four-year bachelor's degree in Canada. So that, plus my one-year certificate that I studied here in Canada, got me a total of 128 points. Another factor that heavily contributed to my CRS score is my IELTS test results. I got 122 points for having these scores on my IELTS general test. And that's the other important factor that most people overlook, and that's your English and or French speaking abilities. Like, it's so amazing that you can get the most amount of points in the shortest period of time with very little cost by doing well on your English and or French proficiency test. And just imagine, our points decrease as we age, so we really can't do much about that. And for your education, it may entail spending thousands of dollars in international student fees and potentially years of your life to study a program that you may or may not like just to get somewhat the same score. So really, if you do well on your IELTS exam, that's like the most bang for your buck. Next, I also got 40 points on my Canadian work experience. Um, basically, immediately after I completed my studies and applied for a post-grad work permit, I was very fortunate to land a skilled job here in Canada. It was a knock job, and like the timing that I got my job was just impeccable. As I was able to fully maximize my one, my one-year post-grad work permit, working a skilled job that later on helped me qualify for CEC and FSW. Last but not least, I also gained 50 points on the Skills Transferability Education Criteria. I gained this 50 points by having strong official language proficiency and a post-secondary degree as seen on your screen. And so, if we add it all together, my total CRS score was 450 points. Now, some of you may be planning ahead or are just curious to find out the makeup of your CRS score. Why? Perhaps you're planning to immigrate to Canada as well under the Express Entry Program, which is good practice because if you do have long-term goals to stay in Canada, you kind of have to work backwards. Basically, you do the reverse by already picturing yourself on how you can get the maximum possible CRS score in order to get that ITA. One way to prepare is by computing your CRS score even before you begin the process. And there's actually a free tool that you can use found on IRCC's website to help you with just that. Hence, I will be showing you how to compute your CRS score right now. So first things first is to go to Google. Type CRS tool on the search bar. Click the link you see on the screen, which will direct you to IRCC's webpage. Scroll down to the bottom of the page and you'll find this subtle box, which is the CRS tool. Now we will have to answer a couple questions and depending on your answer, you will be able to compute for your CRS score. But before that, big disclaimer. Since we're pretty much computing for future outcomes, the score generated may or may not be your final score. So please do not fixate on the score so much, but treat it as a guide that may help you gauge your position. And with that, let's begin. Number one, what is your marital status? So select the one that applies to you. And in my case, I am never married slash single. Next, how old are you? All right, so for this part, we do have to do a bit of math because we will not be putting our current age, but the age that we assume we would be if we qualify for express entry. 
As an example, let's apply this using my case. All right, so I started my studies in Canada at 23 years old, and I took a one-year program, which meant I'll complete the program at 24 years old. Assuming, again, assuming that I get a skilled job right away, I would be eligible for express entry at 25 years old, which uh, happens to be a true story. And hence, the age that I'm supposed to put here is 25. Next, what is your level of education? So in my case, I had the ECA, wherein my bachelor's degree from the Philippines turned out to be a bachelor's degree equivalent here in Canada. And I also took a one-year certificate program here in Canada. Since it's asking me to enter the highest level of education, I selected not the bachelor's degree, but actually the one after that. In reality, I actually got two or more certificates where one must be for a program of three or more years. Next, have you earned a Canadian degree, diploma, or certificate? Pretty straightforward. I selected yes, but select the one that applies to you. The follow-up question will then be, choose the best answer to describe this level of education. And for me, it was a one-year certificate because that's the only education that I actually took here in Canada. Next, are your test results less than two years old? All right, so hypothetically speaking, if we answered no, then we will not be eligible for express entry. And that's because the prerequisite to apply for this program is having an English or French proficiency test. In short, you must answer yes to be eligible, which I did. This will then prompt the next question and it is asking me, which language test did I take for my first official language? I took the IELTS general test. And now I just have to input my scores accordingly so I'll just do this very quickly. The next question is asking if I have other language test results. So if you took both English and French proficiency tests, like good on you because you'll get more points. I didn't, so I answered not applicable. Next up on work experience, in the last 10 years, how many years of skilled work experience in Canada do you have? So getting skilled work experience means uh, finding a job that falls under knock B, A, or zero. I only had one year. Next, in the last 10 years, how many years of foreign skilled work experience do you have? So my answer for this question was zero. So none or less than a year. And that's because I immediately went to Canada to study again after graduating from university, so. Yes, studious. Do you have a certificate of qualification from a Canadian province, territory, or federal body? I selected no. Do you have a valid job offer supported by an LMIA? But none of these apply to me since I worked in Canada on a post-grad work permit, which is a type of open work permit. And hence, I answered no. Okay guys, we're almost there. Um, do you have a nomination certificate from a province or territory? So this pertains to people who have qualified for PNP or the Provincial Nominee Program. And since I did not qualify under this program, I selected no. Last but not least, do you or your partner or common law partner have at least one brother or sister living in Canada who is a citizen or permanent resident. Again, this does not apply to me, so my answer is no. However, select the one that applies to you. Now, at the end of this very long ass questionnaire, you'll see this button. So click that to calculate your score. After which, you'll find a detailed breakdown of your potential, potential CRS score from your age, level of education, official languages, work experience, and yada yada. And most importantly, at the very bottom, you'll find your grand total score. Oh, but wait, Rachel, your score here is 465, but you said you got 450, so what happened? Well, actually guys, after some digging, I found out that IRCC added an additional points criteria, which you'll find here. Basically, they gave people extra points now for having studied in Canada and also meeting various other factors. So if I had submitted my express entry profile after this update, I would have gotten the 465 points. But since I submitted before the update, I only got 450, which is a big discrepancy if you ask me, but you know, I'm no hard feelings. 
I got what I wanted at the end. So, now that you understand Express Entry, how the draw works, how to compute your score, and even get to know me and my story, use this info as your leverage. Get creative. Find ways to improve your chances of getting an ITA by either aiming for a higher level of education or getting your credentials assessed, getting better IELTS test results, assimilating into the Canadian setting by studying or working here longer, or perhaps getting a nomination certificate from a Canadian province under PNP. There's really a lot of ways to boost your score, but these are just some of the things that I can think of as of the moment. And if all of this information is overwhelming to you, not to worry. You may subscribe to my channel to get uh, more Canadian immigration related content plus school related content if that's something you fancy. Or you may consider consulting with an immigration lawyer or registered immigration consultant for a fee. I know I'm not an authorized representative and hence I can't provide you with legal advice, but I can connect you with the right people to get qualified and professional legal help. So again, if you're interested, you may check out my website at canixvisa.com. Anyway, that's it. That's all I have for today. I know this video is longer than usual, but you know, thank you for being such a champ for sticking through. Thanks again for watching. Be safe and be kind. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.